Hey guys, so the days of investing in new standard sets have died. Card Kingdom is dumping Carvel Murders at Carvel Manor after other people have dumped it. Uh, the dump has been anywhere for the Play Boosters. I think they're dumping it at 100, which is the same as Card Shop Live, which is Channel Fireball. It seems like all major retailers are the, the, the Play Boosters being rejected straight up by everybody. And in my opinion, this makes sense because a booster box should be $100. That is the price point of a booster box. Now the collector's edition is not really collector's edition. You guys should know this by now. None of the collector's editions have really gone up in price. Rudy used to do these charts where he would show, oh, you know, look at how much money everyone's making from all the collector's edition I showed you. He's never willing to give you a good deal, and I can prove it via MetaZoo. He could have gave his patrons a fantastic deal, but he chose to just hemorrhage them, their money. Uh, Nightfall, like, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, it's pretty bloody brutal what those MetaZoo patrons, and you're going to be like, oh, they all flipped it. No, I don't think they did. And one example of this was the 6.9 product, which has a horrendous EV, and and probably many of them expected the EV to be really bad. And yet, uh, here they are opening them uh, on YouTube. Huh, that's weird, right? For some people who are supposed to diamond hands a product, for people who are supposed to uh, quick flip the product. So, I mean, you're getting two very, very different realities, right? On one, one reality, you're supposed to quick flip the project product, right? Like MetaZoo, you're supposed to quick flip it. And on the other hand, you're supposed to diamond hands it, right? So I, I don't know, like what, what is going on here? Like how can you give two philosophies for the same product? So anyway, um, Card Kingdom is very intelligent. I always follow their buy list. They're rarely wrong about a product. They have a lot more data points and even alpha, they, they sell more than alpha investment. They're a legit store with a website with transparent pricing available to the public. I had a conversation with someone and it really is uh, transparency today is needed because there's a lot of crypto. There's a lot of this, uh, let's call it hanky-panky stuff, right? Where things are not what they appear and they're always hidden behind paywalls. People don't want that anymore. They want to know what the price is. Do you have the lowest price? Is there like a fee? You know, is there a membership? And so on. They're going to do their own calculations. Uh, and many people given the current economy, are shopping for the lowest price and with the best service, right? Card Kingdom, check, check, check. Uh, I mean, some of these challenger decks, I might pick up a few just to play over the girlfriend and try to teach her a little bit of magic who doesn't really play magic. For like $10, $13, a challenger deck, just a pre-built deck that is supposedly synergetic, right? Mm. <laughs> it's a great deal. I mean, Card Kingdom, like, why would you subscribe to a membership where you're just paying more money for everything? And you know that, um, what was it called, the Silver Tempest? You know that's on sale, right, at Dave and Adams right now? <laughs> they can't get rid of that little Vulpix, dude. They're dumping. It reminds me of Monthly Magic Box, where we talk about Tolerant Community College. They would just dump product onto the base. Murders of Carvalho Mat. Like, when it came out, literally no one said buy it. Like, no one. I, I watch a lot of YouTube Finance and MTG Finance, and no one was positive on the set. Artwork looked bad, and the power level looked really, really shoddy, right? And actually, the most powerful common, the most powerful card is a uncommon in the set. So, a lot of bizarre things happening. Um, probably most bizarre is that Rudy actually promoted this, and he's really positive about it, and he's all surprised about Invisible Ink. I saw that opening. People are so happy, clapping their hands. Wow, this we're, we're to go to the moon, baby. And it's like, no, guys, this set is being dumped weeks, you know, before. I mean, what was pre-release? A few weeks ago? Yeah, I think I made, I mean, this set is awful, guys, from a finance. I, I'm i not going to play the set. I'm not going to buy this set. Maybe I'll buy a few boosts. I mean, Car Kingdom is cheap. $100 a box. Car Shop Live had that, but I don't like Car Shop. I'd rather buy from Car Kingdom. Dude, people are getting slaughtered. And I, I mean, when I mean slaughtered, I mean they're getting just wholesale just cleaved off right now. Like they, they got to be taking losses at this price, right? At 140 a collector box, how can they not lose? At 100 a play box, how can they not lose money? 
but maybe they all know something. The only conclusion I have here is that these people were dumping these, and Car Kingdom is not a small fish. It is a big fish, and they're dumping. Which leads me to the conclusion that maybe there's a bigger fish, i.e. Amazon, which Rudy said, oh, they're never going to dump again, guys. Oh, it's okay, everyone, bye, bye, bye for me. A 180, why there's a marketplace at 180 plus the 50. The 15 thing is just so ridiculous that he cannot sell booster packs. Like, he cannot separate his Patreon from his business, right? He doesn't have a website with transparent prices, especially buy list prices, right? These other businesses, these other car shops, I mean, he's basically operating in the darkness. And he's, he's from Wall Street. He knows how that ends up, right? So, uh, most famous case in Wall Street, sunlight is the best disinfectant. That was a judge ruling on the case. And the idea, uh, that was Dodd's-Frank Act. And the idea was that whenever people try to hide stuff, um, it's because they're doing shady stuff and ripping customers off. But when you're transparent about your buy list, about your prices, about what you sell at, about your sale, you let the customer decide. And I always hear that, oh, well, you know, it's the customer's fault. Oh, they should have bought MetaZoo. They should have known. Not everyone knew. But when you're in a little bubble created by the dude, like, you don't know anything. These people are, like, I don't think they're idiots. I think they're living in a cult-like bubble. And, you know, you might be like, oh, like, there was, like, some Smallville cult from, like, Allison Mack. And it's, like, Allison Mack's a smart person, but she fell for the bubble. And all these really intelligent, independent, strong women fell for the, you know, it was a basically a blank scandal, right? And you're just like, how did that happen? Well, because it's a cult. <laughs> like, you know, it's, what do cults operate under? They operate under, you know, hidden information, paywalls, and all this stuff. So no one actually knows what the hell is going on. But when you're in the cult, you think, oh. This is just how it is. Everyone just talks to each other. Everyone's like, oh, to the moon, Tomo. Coddle, hoddle, hoddle, diamond hands. Like, it's exactly crypto. It's no... Let me tell you a story that I got. And let me... Can somebody on Alpha Investment side... Can Alpha Investment confirm this? So let me get this straight. You buy the Rudy Gem Keeper promo, which is a flesh and blood card, for $1,000. Then you get discounts on cases. Not boxes. Cases. So you're forced to buy a case of uh, flesh and blood to get a $69 discount and the case price is already very high so you wanted you know this is pretty bizarre right because you're paying a thousand dollars to pay him more money and to buy more product than you normally would want like what happened to buying singles guys like you do know the best deal is buying singles yeah like does, does everyone forget about that does everyone forget that buying singles, long term, short term, or is a way better use utility of your money than buying a box, if you want to play the game, right? Does, does anyone disagree with that, right? If you had to get that rare mythic, you're not even guaranteed in that in a case of getting the card that you want. So, I don't know. You know, I I think the idea is you if you want to play this game, you buy singles. If you want to invest in game, invest in reserve list. There is no room for investing in this shitty product called Carlo Manor. This is a shitty product, man. And anyone promoting it to you, I don't know what to say. It's not a good product. And they know it.